Top 25 IT System Administrator Interview Questions and Answers In the competitive field of IT, system administrators play a crucial role in maintaining and optimizing technology infrastructures. This video presents a curated list of the top 25 interview questions that candidates are likely to encounter. Alongside each question, we provide comprehensive answers to help you prepare effectively. Whether you are a seasoned professional or new to the field, these insights will enhance your confidence during interviews. 1. What are the differences between TCP and UDP, and when would you use each? TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, is a connection-oriented protocol, ensuring reliable communication through error checking and acknowledgement of data packets. It establishes a connection before data transfer, suitable for applications requiring accuracy, like web browsing and email. UDP, User Datagram Protocol, on the other hand, is connectionless and does not guarantee delivery, making it faster and more efficient for real-time applications such as video streaming or online gaming where speed is crucial and occasional data loss is acceptable. Choosing between them depends on the needs of the application regarding reliability versus speed. 2. Explain the concept of Active Directory and its key components. Active Directory, AD, is a directory service developed by Microsoft for Windows domain networks. It is used for managing computers, users, and resources in a network. Key components include domain services, which manage domain data, lightweight directory services, for lightweight directory access protocol, LDAP, compliance, federation services, that enable single sign-on, SSO, and certificate services, which provide public key infrastructure, PKI. AD allows centralized management of user accounts, group policies, and security settings, enhancing network security and administrative efficiency within organizations. 3. How do you perform a backup and restore in a Windows or Linux environment? In Windows, you can perform backups using the built-in backup and restore utility or third-party software. Choose the files or system images you want to backup, select the destination, and schedule regular backups if needed. For restore, access the same utility, choose the desired backup, and follow prompts to restore files or the system. In Linux, backup methods include using tar, rsync, or dedicated tools like bacula or duplicity. For restore, use the corresponding command or tool to retrieve files from the backup location. Always ensure to verify backups for integrity before performing restores. 4. What are group policies, GPOS, and how do you apply them? Group policies, GPOS, are a feature in Microsoft Windows that allow administrators to manage user and computer settings across an Active Directory environment. They enable centralized control of various configuration options, such as security settings, software installation, and desktop environments. To apply GPOS, you first create a GPO in the Group Policy Management Console, GPMC. Then, you link the GPO to an organizational unit, OU, containing the users or computers you want to target. After configuring the desired settings within the GPO, you can use the GP update command on client machines to refresh the policy immediately. Regularly reviewing and testing GPOS is important to ensure they are working as intended and not causing conflicts. 5. Describe the steps to troubleshoot a slow running server. Troubleshooting a slow running server involves several steps. First, check resource utilization by examining CPU, memory, and disk usage using tools like Task Manager or Top Command. Next, review running processes to identify any that are consuming excessive resources. Investigate network performance, checking for latency or packet loss. Examine system logs for errors or warnings that could indicate issues. Additionally, ensure there are no bottlenecks in the storage system. If necessary, perform a hardware check, including disk health and memory tests, to rule out physical problems. 6. How do you secure a Windows server against unauthorized access? Securing a Windows server against unauthorized access involves several key practices. First, implement strong password policies, requiring complex passwords and regular changes. Utilize Windows Firewall to control incoming and outgoing traffic. Employ Role-Based Access Control, RBAC, to ensure users have the least privilege necessary for their roles. Regularly update the server with patches to fix vulnerabilities. Enable Windows Defender for real-time protection against malware. Finally, audit user activity and access logs to identify any suspicious behavior, allowing for prompt action against potential threats. 7. What's the difference between a switch, a router, and a firewall? A switch is a networking device that connects multiple devices within a local area network, LAN, using MAC addresses to forward data only to the intended recipient. A router, on the other hand, connects different networks, directing data packets between them based on IP addresses, enabling communication between devices on separate networks. A firewall serves as a security barrier, monitoring and controlling incoming and outgoing network traffic based on predetermined security rules, protecting networks from unauthorized access and threats. Each device plays a crucial role in network functionality and security. 8. Can you explain RAID levels and when you would use each one? RAID, Redundant Array of Independent Disks, 
levels define how data is stored across multiple drives to enhance performance, redundancy, or both. Common levels include RAID 0, which strips data for speed but offers no redundancy, RAID 1, which mirrors data for fault tolerance, RAID 5, which uses striping with parity for both performance and redundancy, and RAID 10, which combines mirroring and striping for high performance and redundancy. Each level suits different needs. RAID 0 is for speed, RAID 1 for critical data protection, RAID 5 balances speed and data safety, while RAID 10 is ideal for high demand applications requiring both resilience and performance. 9. What monitoring tools have you used, and how do they help in system administration? In system administration, I've utilized various monitoring tools such as Nagios, Zabbix, and SolarWinds. These tools help in tracking server performance, uptime, and resource utilization. They provide real time alerts for potential issues enabling proactive management of system health. For example, Nagios allows for custom thresholds, notifying administrators when performance dips below acceptable levels. Zabbix's visualization features facilitate quick assessment of system status. Using these tools, I can ensure optimal performance, quickly diagnose problems, and maintain a stable IT environment. 10. What steps would you take if users cannot access a shared network drive? When users cannot access a shared network drive, I would follow these troubleshooting steps. First, I would verify if the users are connected to the network and if the drive is mapped correctly. Next, I would check the server hosting the shared drive to ensure it is powered on and accessible. After that, I would review permissions on the shared folder to confirm that users have adequate rights. If everything seems in order, I would investigate potential connectivity issues or network configurations that might be blocking access. Lastly, reviewing logs for error messages can provide insights into the problem. 11. Describe the boot process in a Linux system. The boot process in a Linux system begins when the computer is powered on. The BIOS or UEFI firmware initializes hardware and performs the POST, power on self-test. After that, it locates the bootloader, typically GRUB, GRAND Unified Bootloader, which is loaded into memory. GRUB then presents a menu to select the operating system or kernel. Once a selection is made, GRUB loads the selected kernel into memory and passes control to it. The kernel initializes system components, mounts the root file system, and starts the init process, which is responsible for launching system services and user sessions, ultimately bringing the system to a functional state. 12. How do you manage user permissions and ownership in Linux? Managing user permissions and ownership in Linux involves several key commands and concepts. The chmod command is used to change file permissions, allowing you to set read, r, write, w, and execute, x, permissions for the user, group, and others. Using chown, you can change the ownership of a file or directory to a different user or group. It's essential to understand the permission structure, which can be viewed with the LSL command. Implementing access control lists, ACLS, provides more granular permission management. Regular audits of permissions help maintain security and ensure that users have appropriate access levels. 13. What are common PowerShell commands you use as a system administrator? PowerShell commands, known as CMD lets, are essential tools for system administrators. Commonly used CMD lets include get process, which retrieves information about running processes, and get service, which provides details on system services. Set execution policy is used to change the user preference for the PowerShell script execution policy. For file management, copy item and remove item allow for copying and deleting files, respectively. Additionally, get event log helps in monitoring system logs, and new AD user is crucial for managing Active Directory user accounts. These commands streamline administrative tasks and enhance productivity. 14. How would you troubleshoot a BSOD, blue screen of death? To troubleshoot a BSOD, first, take note of the error code displayed on the screen. This code can provide clues about the underlying issue. Next, check for any recent hardware or software changes that may have triggered the error. Boot the system in safe mode to see if the issue persists, which can help isolate the problem. Use Windows Event Viewer to review logs for any critical errors leading up to the crash. Running a memory diagnostic tool can help identify RAM issues, while checking for driver updates or rolling back recent updates may resolve conflicts. Lastly, consider using System Restore to revert the system to a stable state. 15. What's your experience with virtualization platforms, e.g., VMware, Hyper-V? I have extensive experience with virtualization platforms, particularly VMware and Hyper-V. In VMware, I've managed SG hosts, created and configured virtual machines, and utilized vCenter for centralized management. I've also implemented VM snapshots for backup and recovery purposes. With Hyper-V, I've worked on Windows Server environments, creating virtual switches and managing VM migrations using live migration. These platforms have significantly improved resource utilization and disaster recovery capabilities in the organizations I've supported, 
allowing for flexible scaling and efficient management of IT resources. 16. How do you enforce password policies on a domain level? To enforce password policies on a domain level, you can utilize Group Policy Objects, GPOS, within Active Directory. Start by opening the Group Policy Management Console, navigate to the relevant domain or organizational unit, OU, and create a new GPO or edit an existing one. Under Computer Configuration, go to Policies, then Windows Settings, and finally, Security Settings. Here, you can set policies for password length, complexity requirements, and expiration intervals. Apply the GPO to the desired domain or OU, ensuring it propagates correctly. Regular audits can help ensure compliance with these policies across all user accounts. 17. What measures do you take to ensure system patch compliance? To ensure system patch compliance, I implement a structured patch management process that includes regular assessments of system vulnerabilities. I utilize automated patch management tools that can schedule and deploy updates across all servers and workstations. Regular audits are conducted to verify patch statuses, ensuring all systems are up to date. Establishing a testing environment allows for the evaluation of patches before deployment, minimizing disruptions. Additionally, I maintain clear documentation of patch installations and compliance reports to track progress and address any discrepancies promptly. 18. Describe a time you handled a security breach or vulnerability. What did you do? During a routine security audit, I discovered an unpatched vulnerability in one of our web applications. I immediately escalated the issue to management and initiated a response plan. We first isolated the affected system to prevent any potential data loss. Next, I coordinated with the development team to apply the necessary patches and updates. Additionally, I conducted a thorough analysis to identify any signs of exploitation. After ensuring the system was secure, I organized a training session for the staff on best security practices to prevent future occurrences. The incident reinforced the importance of regular audits and timely updates. 19. Have you worked with cloud services like AWS, Azure, or GCP? Describe your experience. I have extensive experience working with cloud services, particularly AWS and Azure. In AWS, I have deployed applications using EC2 instances, managed databases with RDS, and implemented storage solutions with S3. I have also configured VPCS for secure networking and utilized IAM for user access management. In Azure, I have worked on deploying virtual machines, setting up Azure Active Directory, and leveraging Azure functions for serverless computing. My experience includes monitoring performance and optimizing costs through resource management tools provided by both platforms. 20. What is your understanding of infrastructure as code, IAC? Have you used any tools like Terraform or Ansible? Infrastructure as code, IAC, refers to the practice of managing and provisioning computing infrastructure through machine-readable definition files, rather than physical hardware configuration or interactive configuration tools. This approach allows for automation, consistency, and scalability in deploying and managing infrastructure. Tools like Terraform enable the creation of infrastructure using declarative configuration files, while Ansible provides automation capabilities through playbooks. Both tools facilitate version control, collaboration, and reproducibility in infrastructure management, reducing the risk of human error and streamlining deployment processes. 21. Tell me about a time when you had to prioritize multiple critical issues. In a previous role, I faced a situation where a server outage occurred simultaneously with a network security alert and a critical software failure affecting user productivity. I quickly assessed the severity and impact of each issue. I prioritized the server outage first since it affected all users' access. I assigned a team member to investigate the security alert while I facilitated a temporary workaround for the software failure. This approach allowed us to restore server access swiftly while ensuring security was monitored and users had support for the software issue. This experience highlighted the importance of effective communication and prioritization in high-pressure situations. 22. Describe a time you automated a repetitive task. What tools did you use and what was the outcome? I automated a repetitive task in my previous role by implementing a PowerShell script that managed user account creation and deletion in Active Directory. This script integrated with a CSV file that contained user details, allowing us to create multiple accounts in bulk. The automation reduced the time spent on this process from several hours each week to just a few minutes. It also minimized human error during account setup, leading to increased accuracy and efficiency in our user management process. Team members were able to focus on more strategic tasks as a result. 23. Have you ever had a conflict with a team member or end user? How did you handle it? Conflicts can arise in any workplace, and I've encountered situations where misunderstandings led to tension. In one instance, a team member and I disagreed on the approach to a project. I initiated a private discussion, allowing each of us to express our viewpoints. By actively listening and acknowledging their concerns, I was able to find common ground. We brainstormed alternatives and eventually agreed on a compromise that satisfied both parties. 
this experience reinforced the importance of open communication, empathy, and collaboration in resolving disputes effectively. 24. What do you do when you don't know how to solve a system issue? When faced with an unfamiliar system issue, I first take a systematic approach. I begin by gathering as much information as possible, including error messages, logs, and system behavior. Then, I consult documentation and online resources to identify potential solutions. If the issue persists, I reach out to colleagues or online communities for insights. I believe collaboration can often lead to faster resolutions. Lastly, I keep track of the problem-solving process for future reference, ensuring that I learn from the experience and improve my troubleshooting skills. 25. Why do you want to work for our company, and how do you see yourself contributing to the IT team? I am drawn to your company due to its innovative approach and commitment to technology. Your focus on continuous improvement aligns with my passion for learning and adapting in the ever-evolving IT landscape. I believe my skills in system administration, cloud services, and automation can enhance team efficiency. I am eager to contribute by streamlining processes, implementing best practices, and providing support to both users and colleagues. Collaborating with a talented team excites me, as I am committed to fostering a positive work environment and helping drive our shared goals. As we wrap up our exploration of the top 25 IT system administrator interview questions and answers, it's clear that preparing for these inquiries can significantly boost your chances of impressing potential employers. Understanding the technical aspects, along with demonstrating problem-solving skills and effective communication, is essential for success in this role. We hope this guide has equipped you with valuable insights to navigate your interviews confidently. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more informative content. Good luck with your job search!